Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to troubleshoot your document in Word. I'm going to show you how to get rid of a lot of really clumsy spaces, underline, where your image doesn't quite fit, where you need to place it a little bit further away from the text. Sometimes you copy and paste stuff into Word and it doesn't look the way you want it to or it comes as funny marks. I'm going to show you how you can either eliminate them or find out what's going on in your document so that you can change it. So the first thing is, if you want to view your document like this, you can go up to the View tab here and select multiple pages. If you want one page, select one page and you will see your document as you normally would when you open it up. Normally I view three pages, three or four pages at a time if I'm editing. But in this circumstance, I'm just going to concentrate on this first section. So I'm just going to use one page and zoom in. So we've got this first list up. I've just copied and pasted this in and it looks a bit messy. I want everything to line up. I want to take out the underline. And you can see when we get to number 10, the text is slightly off here and I want everything just nicely lined up. Also some of the sentences here and sometimes when you've got longer sentences, they'll go on to the next line, but they'll go underneath the numbers and I'll show you how to move them so they're actually underneath the text and line up with the text. So the first thing is I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go up to the home tab and I'm going to take off that underline. The next thing I'm going to do is to see actually what's going on in my document. Now the tool to use is this one here. This is going to be your friend. If I click on it, you can see we've got some blue marks and also some funny double lines, section breaks, and this also comes up as a page break as well. So these funny backward P's are where you put a return or an enter key in. The dots are where you put a space in. And if you use the tab key, you'll see there'll be an arrow. So now you can see what's going on in your document where you've got various formatting marks. We can now go ahead and see how we can customize it. So you can see after every number, we've simply got a space. And that's why when we get to 10, you can see 10 is made up of three characters and nine and subsequent ones only two. Then we've got a space and then our sentence begins. So you can see how it's misaligned. So what we need to do is we need to use the rulers at the top here and these marks. Now, if you can't see your rulers, go to view and make sure that rulers are checked. And if I select the whole of this list, let's just take the formatting marks off because they can be a bit distracting. The top triangle here, if I click and drag, it will move the first sentence of your list. If I move the bottom triangle, it will move the next sentence or the subsequent paragraph. And if I move the bottom one, it will move everything. And that's a little rectangle. So the first thing I'm going to do is to line up the number 10 sentence with the rest. So I can very easily use tabs. Now to do that, I do need to take out the space and just put a tab key in. Now what's unique about the tab key here. It doesn't necessarily matter how many characters you've got before it because there'll be a mark up here, a tiny little line there. That's where the tab key lines up. So even if I put an extra character in here, let's put one, you can see the tabs got shorter, but it still lined up that sentence there with that tab there. So that's why the tabs can be very useful to lining things up. Now when it comes to the subsequent sentences, so this sentence here and this sentence here, I can go back up to the ruler, click on this bottom triangle, and then I can move those to line up with my text above. So now that's all perfectly lined up and you can see now that this text with the number 10 sentence is all lined up as well. Now you might think that all of this is a bit close together. So you can select all of the list. You can go up to this icon here, click on the drop down. Now you can space the lines out, but it will also space out the lines with two sentences. So if I show you that, it will put spaces equally between everything. However, I go back, I can also add space after the paragraph. If I click on that one, you can see that the space has remained between these two sentences, this one and this one, but there is a greater space between each paragraph or each list. So now, if I feel like the text is a little bit too big, I can select it all and maybe take it down to 14. Now also you've got all of these red marks and these blue marks and they are your grammar and spell checking marks. Now what you need to do is right click, you can either select a spelling choice that's given here 
or you can ignore once or ignore all. Perfect, so that list is looking a lot neater now. So let's go down to the next issue. And again, let's look at our formatting marks and you can see we've got a section break here and a section break at the end here. Now, this means that everything between these section breaks is different to the rest of your document. So here, we've got two columns and the rest of the document is one column. So if you want to change this or get rid of it, you can select all of the text within the section break. Then you can go to layout, you can go to columns and you can either adjust it. Let's say you want to go to three columns or you can simply go to one column. Now you can go to one column, but you can still see we've got these section breaks here, which will mean that as you begin to edit this document, they will make a difference. So if you want to get rid of them completely, and just have your document flowing one section to the other, hold down the command or control key on your keyboard, click and drag across the section break and just press delete. Do the same with the bottom here and just press delete and then your document will flow one into the other. Now let's just change the view. There we go. Now I've also inserted an image here and if I try to move it, I can't. It bounces back to the same position. So with this, I need to right click go down to wrap text and here I can decide whether my text will go around my image, tightly around my image, go through my image or go to the top and the bottom of my image. You can send your image behind the text or in front of the text. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use top and bottom, which is great. So now I can move my image anywhere I want and I can also resize it. But what I do have to be aware of is look how close the text is to my image. So if you want to change this, just select the image, go to picture format, go to wrap text and go down to more layout options. And then here it says distance from text. I'm just going to put in one centimeter here, click and drag one centimeter there and click OK. And now when I move my picture around, you can see that the text is at least one centimetre away from my picture. I just resize that picture and move it wherever I want. So I'm going to place it here. To make sure that picture is in the middle of the page, I can select it, go to Align, Align to Centre, and that's in the Picture Format tab. Next, I'm going to sort this list out here. Again, I have simply copied and pasted all of this from another document online. And these were actually speech marks, but I didn't actually want the speech marks anyway. So if I wanted to get rid of these, all the speech marks, all I have to do is to select this section, go up to edit, go to find and select replace. Over here, you'll have a little menu. So in the top one, this is your find menu. I want word to find these stars here or asterisks. I'm going to simply type two of them in because you can see I've got two in front and behind and Word has immediately identified them and put these yellow boxes around them. Then in the replace, I'm going to replace it with just one space bar. You can't see it up here because it's a space. And then I'm just going to click replace all. Word will tell me that it's made 22 replacements and I just click OK. And if I just go back to the Home tab and switch off the formatting marks, you can see how that looks. In addition, I want to get rid of these two dots at the end of the sentences. So again, select all. I'm going to type them in Find. Word's going to find them for me. Then I'm going to hit the space bar, Replace all. So we're going to move this list onto another page. You can do that by just continuously hitting the Return key. Or you can go to Insert and select Break. And then if we turn on our formatting marks, you can see now we've got a page break here. So there'll be nothing included here on a page. I can't type here. I can type if I go above the page break, but not below the page break. So down to this list here, we've got quite a big gap between each line. So we can simply take out these formatting marks. Just click and drag across the formatting marks and press delete. Whoops, if you do that, press Command or Control Z to go back. There we go. 
If you're not happy with the spacing, then you've now got the choice to select it all, go to the Home tab, use this drop down, and then you can space out your lines to exactly what you want. Now, the one other thing you might want to do is to put a label on this image. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can simply right click on it and go to insert caption. But these captions will come with a number. So let's say, for example, this was, I've changed this so it can say figure, figure one. You can format the numbering if you want to or change it to ABC, it's up to you. And then you can simply label this, whatever you like. And then press enter. And as you can see under here, let's zoom in. You can see it says skyline. Now you can select this, go up to the home tab and you can change all of the font if you want to, and you can change the size of the font and take the italics off, it's completely up to you. This is a text box, so you can move this around any way you like, but if you want a little bit more freedom with this and you're not worried about linking it to a table of figures, then you can delete this. You can go to insert, text box, draw text box. You can draw out your own text box. You can put in whatever you like. Let's put in skyline at night. And then we, if I deselect this, you can see it's got a line around the outside. So if I select it, go to shape format, go to this icon here and select no outline, deselect it. And you can see I can move this anywhere I want. Great thing about this one, it's not linked to anything. So we can move it wherever we want. I can use my arrow keys to move it up and down. I can line it up with the side of the image. And then once I'm happy, what I can do is select the text box, hold down my command or control key, click on the image, go to group and select group. And then that's jumped across the page. So go to picture format, wrap text, and go to top and bottom. Let's just zoom out, see what's happened. There we go. And then we can move that anywhere we want to. And you can see how that text has now linked to that image. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility if you want to change things around. If you now want to move this list up onto this page, you can go back up to the formatting marks, hold down your command or control key, click and drag across page break and delete. And then you've got that list on that second page. Take off the formatting marks and then we can simply move this to where we want it. And now that whole document looks a lot neater. So as a final flourish, if you want all the text to match, simply select everything, go to the fonts, choose a font of your choice, choose a size of your choice, let's go to 12, deselect, and you can see everything now matches. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.